The skin on this is the best part, especially this area right here. As that renders and crisps up, uh, it tastes like the best chicken skin you've ever had. So here we have a giant Pacific red octopus. This is coming from Tillamook Bay. These uh, octopus are in a super high population on the Oregon coast um, and they love to eat crab. Uh, so basically the deal with this octopus is that it's extremely difficult to cook it properly. Basically the way that we handle this octopus is we freeze it whole and then we thaw it and then we vacuum seal these with a big handful of coarse sea salt. We then freeze the octopus again. Part of the freezing process causes it to tenderize the inside of the octopus as well as the skin. Typically these octopus weigh anywhere between 20 and 100 pounds. Uh, the largest ones that we've seen are about 85 pounds. They can be 10 to 12 feet long. So apparently it's pretty, they can be pretty dangerous to encounter. A guy that we know that lives in Tasmania said that uh, sort of a rite of passage was that you would take a really large rock and jump off the side of the boat until you sunk all the way to the bottom of the edge of this reef that they have and uh, wait for the, the octopus to grab onto you. And then you let go of the rock and come back up, hopefully. And that's how you know that you're, you're finally a man. <laughs> uh, we're gonna blanch this several times repeatedly in the boiling water and take it out until the octopus is the exact consistency that we're looking for. Um, this has done in the uh, pretty ancient Japanese technique of dunking the octopus in boiling water. It starts to shrink immediately. And kind of what we're looking for here is for the uh, tentacle to curl. It's a really good forearm workout as well. So it's the bonus of that. You know, it's like, one of, it's like a lot of these things. There's not really any information about it available. Uh, really just a lot of practice and trial and error and paying attention to different details. We're just trying to highlight the maximum flavor potential of these ingredients and present them really simply. We're not really trying to doctor them up or, or add anything to it that's gonna take away from the natural flavor of it. These large octopus are amazing because they have a really uh, thick gelatinous layer of skin around the head and uh, the tentacles. Uh, so that's another reason why we cook it like this is to keep the skin intact. And when you cook an octopus, whether you're searing it or grilling it or frying it, um, all really good techniques for uh, cooking this octopus, um, the skin gets crispy on the outside and it caramelizes. It's almost like uh, chicken or fish skin like extremely crispy, pretty, pretty incredible. One thing that happens a lot with octopus, and I think is the reason why so many people like it, is because when it's cooked in a copious amount of water, um, all the octopus water will leach out into the liquid. And a lot of times the octopus doesn't have a really any flavor at all. Um, a lot of people liken the flavor to chicken or, you know, just something very easy to eat. But to me, that's kind of a shame because, you know, you want things to have, uh, the flavor that they naturally contain or that they're supposed to or get the most, coax the most flavor out of. So this cooking method, we're cooking in such a small amount of water with a lot of concentrated salt that there's literally no dilution of flavor that happens at all with this octopus. Whereas if we were cooking it in a really large pot of water or we were braising it with other ingredients, all that happens when you do that cooking method is that all the flavor leaves the octopus into the water. Uh, a lot of people who try this octopus for the first time are kind of blown away about the amount of flavor that it has. Yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the main characteristics is very, very strong octopus flavor in a good way. All right, so we can really see that it's starting to hold its shape really well. And then I'm going to come in here from the side. Skewer goes in without any resistance. So we're done. So now that we have this uh, octopus cooked and cooled, we're just going to cut it into portions for the grill. Uh, we leave them in as big of pieces as possible so that the skin can crisp up. Really gently so we don't mess up that skin at all. So we're just gonna remove that one piece on the end, small chunk. We just dehydrate any of the octopus scraps and they make awesome uh, broth. And then these are ready for the grill. We're gonna cook this over really high heat until it uh, starts to caramelize. Um, and at that point, it'll start to uh, release from the grill. And also we grill it on these screens like this um, so that we have the ability to look up and peek and we don't have to uh, agitate it too much and mess with it. It's more of a slow grill on this guy. You don't want it to cook too fast because um, the skin will retract and pull off. So we're trying to um, almost render it like a duck breast. 
so we've just flipped it onto another tray. So this is our grilled octopus. Uh, it's ready for service. It's just going to be sliced um, before plating. So we're going to brush this with a paste made from shiitake mushrooms. So these mushrooms have been roasted and then dried. And then we make them into a paste with grapeseed oil. And it gets brushed onto the octopus. I love octopus. I have a lot of respect for these creatures, but I also think that they play a vital role in regards to you know what we eat because we have to rotate our fisheries to things that have really high populations. You know, it's one of those things when a fisherman pulls up a crab pot and there's an octopus in it, but it's eaten all their crab. It's nice to have people that, there that would be willing to purchase the octopus because it does take away so much from the uh, livelihood of the fishermen.